Yo, what's up? The enlisted game features hundreds of different weapons for your soldiers. So, to bring order into the chaos, let's take a look at the 15 main weapon types for your infantry troops. And we start with the backbone of every World War II army, the bolt action rifle. Now these entry level weapons are not only the first weapon you get in every single nation, but they are also among the strongest weapons. So unlike many games where you have to grind until you get the good stuff, here you already start with the good stuff. Reason for that is, bolt actions, as in real life, easily one shot enemies. And they not only one shot enemies on short range, but also on mid range and in most cases even on long range. So no matter where you click on the enemy, as long as you hit him in the body, he's gonna be dead. This is huge, also gives the game amazing immersive feeling. And the best thing about this historically accurate weapon type is that it comes in many different flavors. Not only can you choose from roughly 10 different bolt actions per nation, but also every one comes with a unique iron sight. So it's not only about power level, it's also about how comfy it is for you to aim on the screen. And also, every single bolt action rifle has its unique combination balance of stats. The first bolts you get are the slowest in terms of fire rate, but they come with bayonets and usually feature very good iron sights. The following unlocks receive faster fire rates and keep their bayonets. And the last bolts you unlock are usually the fastest firing overall, some of them due to being lever action rifles but they lose their bayonets to create a balance among all of the bolt actions. Overall, they're one of the greatest, most immersive weapon types to choose in the game, especially for people who want to get really deep into that World War II atmosphere. Famous examples are the K-98K, with over 14 million exemplars built before and during World War II, the Winchester, that was originally designed and built in and for America, but also with 300,000 units shipped to the Russian Empire before the revolution and even used still during World War II by the Soviets and of course the Austrian Mandlicher, which I not only chose for its great fire rate but also to show you the proper pronunciation. <laughs> Next we get the semi-auto rifles. Now this unlock following the bolt action series is overall a quality of life improvement because they are easier to use since you don't have to reload after every single bullet. You can just shoot your whole magazine one by one and some of them even have very fast fire rates. This trade-off between lower damage but faster fire rate gives you a significant advantage against groups of enemies but also on lower distances in general. Though the reduced damage makes itself visible once you start engaging enemies on mid and especially long range where you very likely will need two or even three hits to finish your work. The series of semi-auto rifles spans from low up into high BR. Reason for that is, unlike with bolt actions, you don't really have a power cap. Because whereas the bolt actions are limited at their highest tiers by the lack of a bayonet, Semi-autos don't really have this, because their strongest iterations can have bayonets. So what you get overall is a mix of entry-level semi-auto rifles with either significantly reduced damage or reduced max size, followed by the intermediate versions with normal max size and normal damage, and succeeded by the strongest iterations, which usually have some advantages like very high magazine capacity or bayonets or overall very good weapon handling. Noteworthy examples are the generously magazined and therefore very fun to use M1 carbine for the Americans, the German late war standard semi-auto rifle Gewehr 43, and of course the backbone of the American Western Front rifle supremacy, the M1 Garand. And the last of the three main rifle types are the select fire rifles. 
Now these are a straight upgrade to the semi-autos, simply due to the fact that in addition to semi-auto mode, they also have full auto mode, therefore the, re the name Select Fire. Also, coming with the additional fire rate, all of them come with additional magazine size. This combination of stats ensures that you can easily spray away a whole squad of enemy soldiers. As long as you learn controlling the high recoil, the combination of very good damage and very high fire rate makes sure enemies won't be able to shoot back while you're spraying them. As all other weapon types too, select fire rifles come in different quality levels, although not too many since they are already at the highest tier of enlisted weapons. For example, Germans get the FG42-1 and the FG42-2. Using the FG42-1 in semi-auto mode gives you automatically the best semi-auto weapon in the game, thanks to the great standard semi-auto rifle stats and the generous 20 bullet magazine size, but using it in full auto gives you Something that feels like the sophisticated special forces weapon it was designed as. There's nothing else to say about select fire rifles than once you reach BF5, absolutely use them and enjoy them, they're a complete blast to play and make sure that your armies can stay at top of every battle. Noteworthy examples are the criminally underrated Soviet AVS. Keep in mind that recoil hits your enemies as strong as it hits your shoulders and the famous line of power trooper rifles of the FG42 family. Next we have one of the most hated weapon types in the game, the grenade launchers. Reason for that sentiment is the perception that they don't require much skill, but nevertheless can wipe away large groups of enemies. And all of this with just one single click and a shot of its grenade charge. Now is that perception justified? Well, the grenade launchers are very easy to use, that's true, but they still have a high skill ceiling. Reason for that is, if you're running around with a grenade, you can easily perfectly shoot at enemies on mid-range, but if someone's on long range, you barely can hit them anyway. And if someone's short range, if you hit them, you also will die yourself. So how do you use them? And this is exactly where the skill part comes in. Because first of all, knowing which types of enemies you're gonna encounter, meaning a group of enemies or a single enemy, that's already quite tricky. And hitting targets on long range is possible, but with a lot of good aim. And it's still a bolt action rifle at the end of the day. So using it as a grenade launcher and as a bolt action rifle in a fluid way confronts every enlisted player with a nice challenge. The first grenade launcher versions come with simple anti-infantry fragmentation shells and the second stage comes with very potent anti-tank rifle grenades. These are one of the most versatile weapons in the game because not only do they easily deal with lightly armored vehicles but even with the strongest tanks in the game, as long as you know their weak spots. And they easily blow up most structures that engineers can build, or even already natural structures on the map, and they still retain their potent anti-infantry explosive power. Some nations, like Germany, come with the bare minimum amount of grenade launchers. Others, like America though, offer you a huge selection of different types of rifles to shoot your grenades with. The best representative of them all is the German standard K98K grenade launcher, coming in the basic anti-infantry version and the anti-tank version. For fans of historical accuracy, it's important to understand that the relevance and prevalence of grenade launchers in World War II, especially the German army, can't be overstated. Because compared to the world famous MG42, which Germany finished roughly half of a million exemplars, it also produced almost one and a half million grenade launcher types and ammunition for those exceeded 70 million. So grenade launchers in World War II, an absolute key component of infantry warfare. And the last rifle type enlisted is everyone's favorite complaint target, the sniper rifles. As in real life, they offer the advantage of having scopes of various magnification levels, 
giving you the upper hand on long distance battles. Opening the path to many viable tactics and strategies, this is especially important if you're up against enemies with very strong weapons. Because most of the commonly viewed as oppressively strong weapons like grenade launchers, select fire rifles and flamethrowers are dealt with the easiest at long distances. This unique advantage keeps your snipers that you get at the absolute beginning of the game together with the standard issued bolt action rifles a crucial part of your army into the highest tiers of enlisted weaponry. And the best thing is, enlisted offers basically all types of sniper rifles that were used in World War II starting with the basic bolt action sniper, going to the semi-auto sniper rifles and even full auto sniper rifles or full auto sniper assault rifles. And if you feel really daring, you can even use the famous scope machine guns that the Japanese used to dominate various jungle battlefields in the Pacific campaign. Famous examples for World War II sniper rifles featured and listed are the Lee Enfield No. 4, which is an absolute top tier bolt action sniper rifle, which not only features the best studs you can have on a bolt action rifle, but also an extended magazine size of 10 bullets. The German standard sniper rifle K98K K with a 4 times magnification scope, and of course the glorious scoped version of the FG42 II. 